What's up kids? Welcome to another fun-filled day of science class. Today we're going to be talking about elements and compounds. But today is kind of a different day. Today I'm going to have my co-presenter, my co-teacher, Mr. Barber. Mr. Barber, where are you at today? Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for some science. Let's do this. Mr. Barber, we're presenting right now. There's no need for goggles or gloves. So do me a favor and lose the goggles and lose the gloves. Uh, all right. Okay, well, what are we talking about then, Mr. Fernandez? All right, well, like I said, we're gonna talk about elements and compounds, but before we get into that, I wanna talk about atoms. Adam, I got a cousin named Adam. I know all about Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Barber, I'm talking about atoms, spelled A-T-O-M-S. Oh, atoms, okay. All right, well, atoms are the building blocks of everything. They're the building blocks of elements and it makes up everything. So we need atoms to have elements. Okay, that makes sense. Um, uh, what's an element again? All right, well, let's talk about that. And an element is a, in its purest form. It is a pure substance, cannot be broken down any further. So let me just look around. Do you have anything around here maybe that How about this? you could consider? I was just about to cook, so I got some aluminum Exactly, foil. so aluminum is an element. And uh, do me a favor here. So we have one big piece, right? Yes. One big piece of aluminum foil, an element. And let's, let's rip it up. Let's rip oh, it in half. Gladly. What happens if I keep ripping it and I get all the way down to the atom of aluminum. Well, it, even if you rip it down where you, ca you can't even see it, where it almost looks invisible, it is still an atom in its most purest form. It is still an element. It is still one atom. Science is amazing. Wait, I think I got it now. So you're, what you're saying is like elements or metals. <laughs> Mr. Barber, that is only one type of element. Yes, so there are three categories of elements. We have metals, non-metals, and metalloids. So oxygen is an element. What? Even though, yes, even though you can't see it, it is still an element. It is it is a pure substance. But this is an element and I can touch it. I can actually feel it. Why would that be? If you can't touch oxygen, I'm trying right now, nothing. You're asking a fantastic question. So it breaks down back to the, uh, the atoms. So when we have solids, the atoms are packed really tightly, really close together, so it's a solid. When it is a non-metal or a gas, these atoms are kind of floating apart, very separate, kind of far apart. So if they're far apart, these atoms, it's considered a gas or non-metal. If they're close together, packed tightly, it's a solid. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, so okay, so we have metals and we have non-metals, right? Correct. So, okay, if you're trying to figure out all the elements on Earth, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to do homework about it. Yes. How am I going to figure all that out? There's probably a lot of different elements. I mean, absolutely. There is hundreds of elements. So with the, they thought about that. They thought, how confusing is it with all these different types of elements? So they created a periodic table to organize it. All right, Mr. Barber, come on over and let's take a look at that periodic table. Mr. Fernandez, that sounds like a great idea. I can't wait to see how they organize elements on a periodic table. Let's do this. All right, behold, the periodic table of elements. All right, let's go ahead and try to find aluminum. Aluminum's right here on the periodic table, and notice how it is represented. It's represented by a chemical symbol. A chemical symbol will always have a capital letter. Aluminum is represented by capital A, lowercase l. Let's look at some more other metals that are in the same category as aluminum. We have iron. And notice what iron's chemical symbol is. It's a capital F lowercase e because it is using its Latin name uh, for the chemical symbol. We also have nickel, also a metal, capital N lowercase i. And we have copper, capital C lowercase u. These are all organized as metals. That's why they're in grouped together on the periodic table and color coordinated as green. Let's go and look uh, to the next uh, category of elements. We have metalloids. Notice that there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's take boron here at the top. This chemical symbol only has one capital letter. So let me uh, remind you, it doesn't always have to be a capital letter and a lowercase letter. Sometimes it's only one capital letter. But the point is it will always have a ca one capital letter if it is an element. It's pure. It stands alone. All right, so the, to the right of the metalloids, we have the nonmetals. So these nonmetals are your, is oxygen, helium, neon, 
any type of non-metal. It could be a gas, but it could also be very brittle. Like Let's review elements. All right, elements are a pure substance that cannot be broken down any further. So what does pure mean? It means not mixed, it means one of a kind, and it means stands alone. Now that I've taught you everything you need to know about atoms and elements, which are pure substances, and I've taught you how they organize the elements on the periodic table, Mr. Barber, what do you think happens when I take two elements and put them together? <laughs> you thought you were going to get me on that. Well, while you were eating lunch, I went and studied, and guess what I learned? If you take two different elements and you chemically combine them, which must be a massive explosion, you get a totally new substance and it's still a pure substance because you had a pure substance that was an element here and there's another one, a pure substance, an element here, and you chemically combine them to make a new substance. It's quite amazing. What happens when we put, let's say, an element like hydrogen together? an element like oxygen together. Will that make something? <laughs> yeah, it, yes, it will. Absolutely. And I definitely can do that. Let's do that now. Okay, so I have a thing of oxygen. It's a gas, so you can't see it. And then I have hydrogen as well, another gas. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collide these things together. And boom, just like that, we have water. H2O. <laughs> Science is awesome. All right, so let's kind of summarize uh, what we were learning here about the elements. Well, first of all, elements are organized on the periodic table of elements in three main categories, metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Uh, the other important piece of information that we need to know is that elements are a pure substance, right? And pure means it's one of a kind. It's not mixed, it stands alone. And the other main thing that we need to know about elements is it's represented by a chemical symbol. That chemical symbol is always going to have one capital letter. So that's pretty much it to, to, you know, to begin our lessons on elements. Uh, we need to learn the basics of elements so when we get into compounds, uh, we can start identifying the different elements that are in a compound. Oh my goodness, Mr. Barber, what are you doing? What are you doing? Ah. You're messing with elements? Ah. Oh my goodness, he's not practicing lab safety. I'm gonna get him. <laughs>